Welcome to your first flipped class of this school year. Today we're going to do lesson 1.5. So make sure as we um, do this lesson on formulas and functions that you follow along with your notes and you fill them in as we go. All right. The essential question for today is how can you use a formula for one measurement to write a formula for a different measurement? So, so far in this uh, chapter, we have worked on solving equations. So the rules that we've been using, the inverse operations, we're gonna continue to use for this lesson as well. But we're gonna be looking at literal equations. So literal equations, here's your definition, I want you to write this in on your notes, is an equation with two or more variables. So an equation with two or more variables. We all know that variables are letters. So an equation with two or more variables would be something like x plus y equals two. That would be the example of a literal equation, an equation with two or more variables. So as we're working these problems today, we're gonna tell you which variable we're gonna solve for. So in example number one, it says solve the literal equation for the indicated variable. So you can see for letter A, it says 3y minus x equals 4 for y. So right here is where we're telling, or where I'm telling you uh, which variable you're going to solve for. So the easiest way to do this is to find the term that has the variable that you're trying to solve for, and let's circle it, all right? We're trying to get 3y by itself. So in order to do that, we have to move this x to the other side of the problem, and we know inverse operations, they're subtracting x, so we're going to add x. And what we do to one side, we must do to the other. So negative x plus x cancels, and we have 3y equals. Now be careful, because 4 plus x is not, or they are not like terms, which means we cannot combine them. We actually just have to bring them both down separately. So we're gonna get in the habit of bringing down the x term first, and then that is a positive four, so we're gonna bring down the plus four. Now we're not quite finished because y is still not by itself. So this is three times y, which means we're going to divide each and every part of this problem by three. So three over three is one, so y equals. Now we wanna be really careful on this side of the problem. If you remember what you've learned in the past, the understood number in front of any variable is a one. So this is an understood one. So as we write down this final answer, that is the fraction one over three, and then we can just drop the x down beside it. And lastly, we can leave as we've been doing, let's leave the fraction as a fraction, and we're okay that it's improper. So the final answer for this equation would be y equals one-third x plus four-thirds. So that is a literal equation, and we solved it for y. Make sure that you have done all of these steps in your notes, okay? I'm going to be checking for this tomorrow. Now letter B, let's do the same thing. This time, we're solving for x. So we want to be really careful. We're still following don't call me after midnight. And as we look at this problem, we see hopefully rather easily that we have a 5x minus a 4x. So we have like terms on the same side of the equal sign that can be combined. So we're going to do y equals 5x minus 4x is x. Now, is it technically 1x? Yes. Do we need a 1 in front of the variable? No. So, if we don't put the 1, we have already solved this problem for x. But, since we're solving for x, let's make sure that that variable goes first. So, our final answer is x equals y. Letter C. Once again, they're asking us to solve for y. So in this particular problem, let's go ahead and let's find the term that has y, and we can see hopefully easily that 4y is the term that has y in it. So that means we've gotta move everything else away from the 4y. 
So we're gonna move 8x to the other side of the problem and since it is a positive 8x, we're gonna subtract 8x from both sides. So it's gonna cancel. And again, when we look at the left side of this problem, these are not like terms. So we are gonna bring down the x term first, and then we're gonna bring down what's called the constant. And it's equal to the 4y that's left on the other side. Now we're still not done because y is not by itself. So this is four times y, which means to move four to the other side, we're going to divide every single term by four. So we have y equals negative eight x divided by four is negative two x plus 20 divided by four, which is five. Again, y is what we were asked to solve for. So we're gonna go ahead and rewrite this with y on the left side of the problem. But we're finished because y is by itself. So y equals negative 2x plus 5. Letter D, moving right along. Now they've asked us in this one, or they should have asked us, to solve 4x. All right, so go ahead and add that to your notes. I forgot to tell you what we're solving for. We're going to solve 4x. And so this one gets a little bit tricky because you can see two terms. We've got the 5x and we've got the negative kx that have the x term in them. But let's go ahead and get x by itself first. So the only thing on the left side of this problem that we're going to need to move is the 3. And it's a positive 3, so we're going to go ahead and move it to the other side. That cancels out and we have 5x minus kx equals y minus 3. Again, not like terms, so we have to bring down the y and the negative 3. Now we look at the left side of this problem and we've got two terms and they both have an x in them. So this is a quick lesson on greatest common factor. If we see in all of our terms a number or a variable that can be pulled out, we do have to pull it out. So if both of these terms have an x in them, we are going to be able to pull that x out, and then we're gonna divide each term by that x. So 5x divided by x would just leave us with five. Bring down that minus sign, and kx divided by x would just leave us with k. And of course, we bring down the rest of the problem. Now, if we've done this correctly, we want x by itself, so x times 5 minus k means to move the 5 minus k, we're going to divide both sides, because they're multiplying, by 5 minus k. Now watch what happens. Anything over itself equals 1. So this cancels and equals 1. And I'm going to have to move this over. You can put this underneath all your work. But my final answer is x equals y minus 3 over 5 minus k. And that is the answer that we would box in. All right. Solving literal equations. Looks a lot like solving regular equations, but we just have some extra variables. Now, in example number two, it says solve the formula for the indicated variable. So the only thing different is these are formulas that you may recognize, but solving for the indicated variable is exactly like what we just did in example one. So we're gonna look at letter A. They want us to solve for L. So again, let's circle the L, just so we can visualize what we're trying to solve for. The only thing keeping L from being alone is that W, so we're gonna move it to the other side. Well, L times W, means the inverse operation is division, so we're gonna divide both sides by that W. W over itself is one, so L equals A divided by W. Again, we like that variable in the front of our answer, so we're gonna go ahead and rewrite it. Now, what we just did is we took the area of a rectangle and we changed it so that we can find the length of the, re the rectangle. So it started out as the how to find the area of a rectangle. We rewrote it and now we could easily find the length 
of that same rectangle. Letter B, they want us to solve for R. So again, let's go ahead, let's circle that R. Now there are two things keeping R from being alone. There is a P and there is a T. And this is our simple interest formula. In case you recognized it, this is the simple interest formula. So since they're multiplying P and T by R, our inverse operation again is division. And we can actually go ahead and divide both sides by PT at the same time. They're both being multiplied by R, so they're both going to be moved with division. So we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by PT. P over P is 1, T over T is 1, so we're left with R equals I over PT. So again, we took the simple interest formula, and now we have a formula so that we could find the rate. So we took one formula and rewrote it to give us another formula. Now let's move on to letter C. This time they want us to solve for F. So we're going to solve for F. Now we've got parentheses, so we got to be really careful. Let's go ahead and look at the 5 ninths. Now if we go back to before I circled this, we have 5 ninths and a parenthesis with nothing in between them. So this is multiplication which means we're supposed to distribute the 5 ninths. But we learned a few days ago that the quickest way to get rid of a fraction is just to go ahead and multiply both sides by the reciprocal. So let's go ahead and move this fraction and let's multiply both sides by the reciprocal. We know it's going to cancel out over here. And over here we're just going to be left with 9 fifths C equals. And on the right we're just left with F minus 32. Now, we're supposed to be solving for F, so let's circle it. And now we can see we've made our lives a lot simpler because now the only thing we have to do is move the 32 by adding it to both sides. Now again, the question is, are these like terms? 9 fifths C plus 32 are not like terms. So we're going to bring them down separately, 9 fifths C plus 32 equals F. And of course, we like our variable that we're solving for first. So F equals 9 fifths C plus 32. And that is the answer that we are going to box in. All right. And lastly, we have our distance formula. Distance equals rate times time. They want us to solve for R. So we are going to get R by itself. They are multiplying R and T, which means the inverse would be to divide both sides by T. T over T is equal to 1. So R equals distance divided by time. So this is how we solve literal equations, all right? Now one more thing I want you to do, again, you're going to bring these notes tomorrow filled in, and we're going to do a class assignment that helps us practice this lesson. But one thing I want you to do before I end this video is I want you to go back to letter A in example number two. And I want you to the left of letter A, I want you to draw a little heart, okay? We'll talk about that heart in class tomorrow. That concludes lesson 1.5. I will see you in class with your filled in notes tomorrow. Have an awesome rest of your night.